Luke, I have a very serious concern about the uh, the topic that you've chosen. I'd like it on the record you've chosen for uh, this week. What is it, Michael? Well, uh, you remember a while ago we reviewed Slumdog Millionaire. In fact, it is our most viewed video we've ever done. It is indeed, yes. And the reason it's so well viewed is because lots of Indian people uh, thought that it was, in fact, uh, the real film being uploaded to YouTube because it was, you know, quite a long discussion and they clicked on it and they found out it wasn't a real film. And it left a very nasty um, insult in Hindi at us. And it's, it's annoying because not only uh, are they insulting us, but obviously they're in Hindi, so we have to go through the effort of Google translating them and then finding out that actually they've just said something uh, horrible about our, our mothers. Now, you might be wondering, why is that bothering me with reference to this film? Well, basically, it's because uh, this film is, is is out now, out very recently on the internet. And I think maybe there's going to be some people out there who, you know, are, are scum that haven't bothered paying for Netflix. And uh, and they're going to be looking for this film online. And they're going to find this review. And essentially, what I'm saying is this this review on this channel is going to be like the whole Slumdog Millionaire thing again, but for pedophiles. Yeah, instead of Indians, it will be pedophiles who are mad at us, which I am not, I'm not fussed with, Michael. Because, you know, yeah. I've got nothing against the Indians. That don't don't mind him really, uh, so you know me pissing them off. Yeah, it's, it's not not the best feeling, but pissing off pedophiles who want to watch a, a movie like Cuties, you know, without even paying Netflix. You know, it's, it's you know it's bad enough being a pedophile, but then on but the top a pirate. Of that, yeah, exactly. Fucking watching uh, movies, you know, f- uh, that are pirated off the internet. That, that's disgraceful. So if I can make pedophiles mad, if I can get a bunch of pedophiles to leave angry comments uh, underneath this video. I'll be very happy. So yeah, I'm glad you said it was my idea because then you know p- people will know that I'm the guy that got a bunch of uh, child molesters angry, and that yeah. is something that I will I will wear. That is a badge I will wear with pride for sure, no doubt about it. We're not shamelessly cashing in on internet drama, Luke. We are on a moral crusade to annoy pedophiles. Exactly. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that have come out in the near and distant past. We give them a couple of watches and evaluate them beyond first impressions. I'm your host, Michael, and joined as always by my co-host, Luke. And this week, we are celebrating not an anniversary, Luke, but the very recent release of the film Cuties. Because we had a, a free spot, I'm sure you can explain this, we had a free spot in our schedule because of some shenanigans of things moving around, as has been the case throughout all of 2020. So you said, you know what, it, it's... It's everywhere. It's like the internet is just begging us to review QTs. It's, it's everywhere. So let's actually do it. Let's break the trend and review a film that's been out for not very long. But why don't you tell us a thing or two about QTs and, and why we're reviewing it? Sure thing, Michael. So yes, uh, Wonder Woman got moved. It is now being released in December. So we had a free spot and we were going to do Goodfellas this week. But I was like, yeah, let's just move Goodfellas next week. You know, it's the 30 year anniversary around this time. And let's do QTs. I'm trying, you know, capitalize on all the drama that's been going on, all the discourse around QTs. Um, so, let's get into it. Cuties, uh, in French it's Mignons, uh, it's a 2020 French coming-of-age drama film written and directed by Mamouna Decoré. I know how to pronounce that because there's a footballer called Decoré. Yeah, uh, I do know that that footballer. I don't know who he plays for or what position he plays in, but I do remember the old Decoré. He moved to Everton, the transfer window, from uh, what? Ah, oh, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. In her feature directional debut, I uh, can't wait to see what what other great films Decore produces in her career. Um, the film stars Fathia Youssef, Medina El Adi Azuni, Ether Gohoru, and oh fucking hell, <coughs> Ilana Kami Gosales, and Mamuma Gay. It's pronounced like that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke. Did you just do a uh, a, a your mama joke against yourself? No. Ma- Mamuma so fat. Mamuma Gay. Oh, is it? Yeah, because there's a footballer who also played for Everton called Idrissa Garner Gay, and it's pronounced <laughs> it's pronounced Gay. I, I, I'm sure of it. Anyway, I believe uh, you. And there's nothing funny about being gay. No, exactly. Just like there's nothing funny about being actually. That's, no, no, ignore <laughs> that. I was going to I was going to make a terrible comparison. Let's ignore that. Yes. Uh, okay. The film was released on the 19th of August in 2020 in France, and on the 10th of September. Uh, in well, in the UK, I guess it's released on Netflix on the 10th of September. Obviously, that's just a couple of weeks uh, after that now. Oh, actually, less than a couple of weeks after that when we're recording. And so, yes, this is all the controversy has sprang up in the last uh, in the last week or so uh, because of that. Uh, but anyway, Michael, can you tell me what uh, the box office has been for Cuties? Uh, because it, there is no budget. So tell me what the box oh, okay. is, please. Uh, I was thinking you made a mistake, so thank you for clearing it up. Um, well, I mean, this is a weird one, because obviously it was released on Netflix. I don't know how that works. So I guess I can go for anything, because let's be honest, uh, how could anyone possibly predict this when there's so many weird variables involved? So I'm just going to go for 
30 million? I mean, look, it was released in the 19th of August. It just okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you know what? That was a stupid thing. I was kind of not thinking about... Okay, that's what's that. Okay. Um, let's go for uh, 8 million. I mean, it's still a bunch less. We're, we're talking $644,000. It has okay, made yeah. at the box office. I'm not so used far. to films. You know, usually we review the big blockbusters. So you, yeah, I, I do, apologize. Do you think the French fucking box office is, you know, one of the biggest in the world? You know, yeah, like, well, I mean, you know, I was thinking those Frenchies, they, they love films. So, yeah, and especially but I guess, yeah. films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, see, okay. I, see your ins- I see what you're calling the French. Uh, but yeah, no, so there we go. Cuties has not made a lot, but obviously released on Netflix. Uh, and who knows what the budget is? So who knows if it has been profitable or not? So anyway, Michael, let's get on to the actual movie. Did you like Cuties? Sort of... I can I can probably guess which scenes you did like. <laughs> no, I mean that's the thing. Like this this film, it was really hard to kind of. And admittedly, when I went into this film, there was a big part of me in my head thinking, I'm sure, like it's obvious, lots of people who didn't like this film haven't seen this film. Like that's obviously the case. Uh, and you know, you can say whether or not that's justified. Maybe you can say, well, well, based on what they did see, they had a good enough reason to dislike it. But that's something in my head. And I kind of thought going into this film that actually seeing the whole thing and the context of it would make it better and i think the answer is it did make it better uh but i mean we'll get into those kind of criticisms but overall i say yeah as a film i sort of liked it what about well, you well i mean you'd hope it'd make it better <laughs> like you'd hope you i i just yeah yeah i, guess, yeah. I described in the cold open a couple of weeks ago um cuties and you know how hilarious the the clip was i saw and i was thinking when watching this movie like you know obviously there, there's going to be a scene where that dance happens and i was just like yeah you, you'd imagine that the movie would make it <laughs> make it uh, feel better in context but obviously we'll dive into that later on uh, and so uh, we'll get on to nitpicks now how many nitpicks do you have michael uh, i've just got one you just got one well i've got two so you go first i think you're really gonna like this one luke it's um the the tears when she was cutting the onion i thought were very fake uh and it, it bothers me because like have you ever actually cut an onion? It's like sometimes you cut an onion, it's fine. But sometimes you cut an onion and you're just weeping. But what I've never had is just like a few... It's kind of... I, I felt weird using this term in this context, but there's a word I think people use in, in films, which is like beauty tears, where someone's like crying, but it's like the crying's kind of... It's not full on. Um, whereas I think everybody I've ever known who's actually kind of cried while cutting onions, it's, it's ugly crying. It, so. it's, it sounds like you're dismissing the real lived experience of uh, Decore and her, uh, and her onion cutting. cutting in her youth. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but uh, frankly, yeah, I, th- I think she she clearly has. I don't think she's ever cut an onion in her life because, like, if you cut that many onions, you would be just like you'd have snot running down your nose. Like, it would just be terrible. Like, I have to blow my nose after half an onion. So, um, no, no. Sometimes I'm fine, but okay. when when it gets you, it gets you hard. That's my opinion. When it well, rains, it pours. So, what about your two? Yeah, nitpicks? let's move off the onion conversation now. Um, so my first nitpick is this movie. What when I watched it on Netflix, automatically set it uh, to English audio instead of French audio. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, did it do that for you as well? Yes, it did. And it was, it was. yeah, I, I switched it off because I was like, this is weird sounding. What about you then? Yeah, I switched it to the French audio because it was just so weird. It was like, what the fuck is, is this an English? It was, like, it was like we were watching an anime. <laughs> yeah, I thought <laughs> yeah, this like was a French. Terrible dubs. Yeah, I thought this was a French movie. What the fuck? Uh, and yeah, apparently you, ha- you can have English audio. Uh, and I was like, no, we've got subtitles. Why would I need... Why would I need English audio when I've got English subtitles? Uh, yeah, yeah, but also, I don't know if this is the case for you. For me, the so I, I listened to the English audio for like a, a scene or two before it really started to bother me, and the subtitles didn't line up with the English audio. I don't know if that yeah, was... That's, that's yeah, that's not surprising, really, is it? So, so it was weird. Like, that, you'd hear the English audio would say one thing, and then the subtitles would say something else. And I was like, well, this is confusing and distracting. And that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to change this. Yeah, so it's a nitpick on Netflix, really. Uh, my second nitpick, uh, the French guy... That the French guy, they're all French. Uh, the, yeah, uh, the guy, good, good job. The guy that the uh, girls are all, all attracted to, uh, he he is not attractive. I'm sorry. Like, they well, could, are you sure it's just because he's a bit too young for you? Uh, Actually, it would have been funny if I said a bit too old for you. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, wait, 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 no, no, no. Wait, what, what did I say? We we got to we got to watch ourselves here, tripping up. I know. You know? But anyway, yeah, we've already we've already said that we thought it was okay, so that's pretty dangerous as far as uh, we've got to make sure we don't say anything too risky. Yeah, I, actually, I didn't give my opinion on it. I, oh yeah, you didn't give your opinion on it. Yeah, I, I mean, kind you, of the same. You you carefully avoided it. Yeah, kind of the same as you, I guess. That's that's probably why. Anyway, uh, so I'm just well back to the nitpick. This this French guy, they couldn't find anyone else. You know, like 
Uh, what about Pierre from the Inbetweeners? Remember him? Oh yeah, he was. Also, didn't he like try and fuck a like? Remember that scene where the girl's like, "I'm thirteen, mate," or something like that, and then Pierre is Pierre is like, "Oh, I'm gonna." He he he's like going. I don't for think it. he says he's, like into it. Yeah, but he like grabs his dick. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. So you know, yeah. which is yeah. You know, I mean, that's same thing. The French in it. So it says more than words ever could. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's the thing. You know, you 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 have people like Pierre in your country. I'm pretty sure. Just find someone like that. Uh, but yeah, those are my. Yeah. Oh, they should. They could have got Timothy Chalamet. He's hot. Yeah, exactly. And he looks like he's twelve as well. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah, there you go. What a twink. Um, wow. Okay, so we have done nitpicks. Let's get into the plot now of Cuties. So uh, let's just read out the uh, the blurb. I guess the plot revolves around a Senegalese French girl with a traditional Muslim upbringing who is caught between traditional values and internet culture. Uh, according to the filmmakers, the film is intended to criticize the hypersexualization of pre-adolescent girls. Okay, so that's what it's about. Uh, let's dive into the plot. Actually, before we do, firstly, I want to talk about the, the release of this film because, you know, I think it was... Yeah, Netflix released a poster. It was in August, and we talked about it on the mm, Memento yeah. Cold Open. And I thought at the time it was a show. It was produced by Hollywood, uh, and, and it wasn't... Well, maybe I thought it was French. <coughs> Sorry, but I didn't think it was, um, you know, a movie, basically. And, uh, you know, it comes out on the 10th of September. And, uh, yeah, like we said last week, uh, hashtag cancel Netflix started trending on Twitter in the United States one day after the film released internationally. And uh, subscribers of Netflix repeatedly threatened to cancel their subscriptions following the release of the film on the platform. Uh, it became the second Netflix film in 2020 to have received severe backlash and condemnation among the public regarding accusations of inappropriate cultural portrayal. Following what movie, Michael? Just tell me. 365 Days. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, I can't believe I've got that. 360. You know what it is? I blanked it from my memory. I genuinely... I really can't remember much of that film at all. Um, but yeah, 365 Days. Yeah, I... Oh, that was fun. Yes. I mean, I don't remember it, but you know, that was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't. I mean, that that movie was just hilarious, just so hilarious. Uh, I can't yeah, believe I must apologise for having ever so slightly forgotten it. Yes. So, in response, Netflix defended Cuties, saying that the film is a piece of social commentary against the sexualization of young children, and encouraged subscribers to watch it. See, I initially I was worried when we did, uh, picked to do this film, it was like, oh, are Netflix going to remove it, and we're not going to be able to watch it. But no. They, they, they hold... Uh, yeah, they stood strong. They, they stood, <laughs> stood strong, indeed. Uh, Decore, basically, the, who directed it, was angry at Netflix. Uh, he, she was angry at the poster. Um, and you had pe- uh, people like the National Center on Sexual Exploitation, a conservative religious organization condemning Netflix. Um, and, you know, we had a bunch of politicians doing it, which we'll get into uh, later. However, Forbes noted that the film does not contain child pornography, such as explicit nudity of a minor. So that's good. That's good when you are watching a movie does yeah. not contain child pornography. That's good, yeah. I like that. That is one of the things. And to be fair, it should be pointed out, we often dismiss that as something else that other films have going for them. <laughs> you know, we, we reviewed Memento. didn't mention that at no point do you see a, uh, a minor who is naked. Yeah. No, that's that's a big <laughs> big plus for this movie. Uh, the French Directors Guild criticised the backlash against the film, calling it a grave attack on freedom of creation, being fueled by the most conservative of Americans. Oh, that's the most just French statement ever, isn't it? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, despite the controversy, the film reached the top five in the United States on Netflix, as well as the top ten in 17 other countries. So this is the thing. Controversy, it always helps. You know, top five in the United States. Uh, maybe it's just from people watching it. Um, to whack off. Yeah. Just to, <laughs> just to see uh, how crazy it is. Uh, or, or to whack off. Maybe there's just a whole bunch of paedophiles in it. Well, yeah, I guess yeah. there is, yeah, so shit maybe that's yeah, it you can't that. yeah. <laughs> however it has also been noted that there was a decrease in renewals to netflix likely due to the film uh the days after the film's release saw an eight times increase in the number of cancellations of netflix uh than typical reaching a multi-year high according to data analytics companies so there you have it michael that is the background to the initial release or the international release of cuties uh so that is the context let's dive into the movie so the plot, uh, what do we think of the plot, Michael? Did you did you like it? 
because obviously um, it's a coming of age film. You know, this. Yeah, yeah. You, you've you've gone on record before saying you like coming of age films. I think you've gone on record saying you have a soft spot, as it were, for coming of age I films. Do. So did you have a so- did you have a soft spot <laughs> for for this? Because I hope you didn't have a hard spot. Uh, yeah, the thing is with coming of age films, it's a you know a movie about a character arc, and it's a realistic character arc. It's you know, you know people go through transitions in their life, and you know you can really sometimes relate, sometimes not relate to the characters you see on screen. And uh, yeah, this I have to say I did not relate to the character of Amy uh, in this movie. Uh, but why well, didn't you? Didn't you want to dance with all the cool girls? No, I did not. School. I, I did not. Uh, yeah. So you know, that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. Obviously, that I can't relate. But yeah, she obviously she's this kid who grows up in a Muslim household, uh, traditional, you know, and uh, some might say oppressive household. Uh, but she gets liberated. That's how you got to say it. Liberated. Uh, like the and fraternity ed and uh, what's the other one uh, equality ed equality ed uh, yeah uh, by uh, these, that's uh, the, the trickler yes by these uh, cutie girls uh, Amy is fascinated by her disobedient neighbour Angelina's twerking clique cuties this is from Wikipedia an adult style Twerk, twerking clique that's yeah. my favourite the phrase ever <laughs> an adult just, just like your, your daughter comes in like did you form a twerking clique <laughs> a twerking no I swear <laughs> that's what the kids are doing nowadays on, on TikTok Doing, doing twerking cliques uh, and I don't yeah, it's gonna be like you know like, you know they get those like terrible lifetime original movies for like parents who like to be afraid of things yes. that will be like on like the danger of the internet and stuff like that is like the t- twerking clique it's, it's like every parent needs to see this there are twerking cliques out there and they're looking to corrupt your children oh no brilliant yes it is an adult style dance troupe which is in stark contrast to Mariam's religious customs values and traditions uh, I think overall yeah it's the start of the movie, anyway. Very by the books. Kind of, you know, the grass is green on the other side. Coming of age situation. It just involves sexualizing kids, uh, which is, you know, the, uh, the, the the thing which separates it from other movies like this. But yeah, I, I you're right. I do like coming of age movies, but this one was just, like I said, apart from, you know, a very obvious thing which deviates from, from the norm. Um, this is a, quite a by the books thing. It's like, oh yeah, she is not happy with her household. She sees this girl who is so, you know, free, and she's dancing, and she's like, oh, why can't I be that girl? And there you have it. There, there's your movie. Uh, and yeah, I, it's not that interesting to be honest. What do you think? No, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree. I think um, that it, it does kind of feel like that. Like it does, especially um, I'll, I'll say this. I think in a way, and I know we're going to talk about this later, but I do feel. Like this film is kind of one of those films where the I, I think it makes sense to try and evaluate the quality of the film independent of that one uh, prominent controversial aspect. But I do think the film makes it hard because there isn't actually much to the film outside of that, and it feels like kind of the sexualization of children buries a lot of the the rest of the film. Like, and there aren't really too many. For example, I will say I did find the whole thing about. Her mum is, or uh, rather her dad, is going to take a second wife. Um, and that is the kind of thing which could have been really interesting, you know, and, and, and sorry, sorry, so I'm, I'm being, and it was quite interesting, you know, and that was something where I was genuinely like, okay, this is an interesting thing because I can understand how there would be complex emotions involved in that. It's obviously something which is interesting from the perspective of, um, you know, different values and cultural relativism and things like that. Um, and and obviously it reflects on on her experience of you know growing up to be a woman. She's basically being told that she should want to grow up to be a, a woman. That she should want to kind of experience the traditional uh, woman womanhood. Uh, and yet at the same time she's seeing how that's actually quite a uh, a negative sad experience. So I liked that. Uh, but then there are other things. Well, one I felt like that was not the main focus of the film, obviously. Um, and then you know there are other things which I feel like this film is kind of missing, which it could have had. For example, I think a, a romance element would have been, or not necessarily a romance element, but more stuff involving the opposite sex, I think is the kind of thing you'd expect to see in a coming-of-age movie. Like, they basically have the scene where they're like, uh, hey, you you older boy, we are much older than we seem, seem so why don't you uh, do, do some stuff with us, you know, like that. Um, Actually, and, that and, should know. have been the nitpick. No way would those older French boys turn that down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm being really mean uh, to the French, but what can, what can I say? I know, They've yeah. done it to themselves. Well, we, we, are, we are English, yeah. yeah so. No, basically... Um, that sign they could have had. I was also thinking they could have done more with like her, her schooling and her teacher and stuff. There's loads of things which, because I think about, for example, Ladybird, which I know you really liked. And I was kind of like, eh, it didn't really, you know, hit me where I live. But Ladybird had loads of interesting stuff regarding friendship, 
relationships and kind of school, which I think are the three things you kind of need in a coming of age movie most of the time. And sure, you can buck tradition and not have some of those things, but I think it usually will lead to a stronger, more rounded uh, coming of age movie if you have friendship, relationships, and school, because I think those three things are things which lots of people relate to. The problem with this film is it's just about friendship. And certainly, uh, I think for, for me and you, we never really struggled to make friends. Isn't it not like something which personally, you know, I just had a group of friends and I was like, oh, this is pretty chill. It wasn't ever anything that was particularly fraught. I think for men in general, friendship isn't usually a particularly fraught thing. So in that sense, I, th- I think they just, they didn't have enough there to cover wide enough bases that people like you and me could connect. Whereas if they had some schooling stuff, some relationship stuff, we could be like, okay, I can kind of connect to this. I, I think what they did have, like I say, with the, you know, her mom and the, uh, you know, polygamy thing was, was interesting. And I did enjoy that, but they didn't have enough of it. So what they did was good, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, you say the focus of the movie isn't on that. I mean, it kind of is. It does take up quite a sizable amount of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's just I guess. That yeah. You're kind of distracted by other elements. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of the of the movie, which you know is is a critique which I will level yeah, at this film throughout this review. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's like oh, you need school stuff, you need relationship stuff, you need friendship stuff, you need all that in your movie. It's just kind of like you you just need to make it not by the books, I and mean, because it's very obvious that well, this girl is unhappy and she, she feels trapped in uh in her situation and she wants to be free you know she wants to do what the these cutie she wants to break free as queen yeah she wants to break free and it's you know like it's such a old age trope that you know you can't it you can't it's a coming of age movie yes but it's also just such a basic trope and you can't then get excited about it it's just it's an interesting thing like lady yeah you know yes you could say well it does have some tropes but you know then every movie has tropes and lady bird is so so much more interesting than this movie and that's probably because you really get into uh the character and it's pretty hard to get into this character because she's 11 years old and you know yeah yeah. the whole thing is well she has no idea what she's doing but i guess that's the same for a lot of coming page movies but especially with this one it's it's so it's so like she has no idea what she's doing that it's just kind of she doesn't have a character almost she's just floating about life it's kind of like um moonlight in that you you don't mm. you you see this quiet kid who doesn't talk a lot who is poor and black you know going out her normal life with school and stuff and I was like yeah the director of this movie de- she she definitely watched Moonlight for sure and that's the thing that yeah she doesn't have a character like Ladybird like that that character you know you I can you know say stuff about it this this Amy I mean one of her character traits apparently is she really likes violence she really likes stabbing people and punching people. Like that's what she likes to do, but as pushing people in rivers, which is quite yes, funny. Pushing people in rivers. <laughs> oh, that was a great scene. Uh, yeah, that that. <laughs> sorry, just laughing thinking about. It. But yeah, that's um, that's the thing. Is that, you know, it's hard to it's hard to do that if there's, if there's no depth to this character, and there really isn't. She's just like a canvas, like like the the kid in Moonlight right at the start. And obviously, Moonlight has you know different stages of this guy's life, mm, which yeah. you know, make make the movie as good as it is. Uh, but yeah, yeah. That, that that is the issue I think overall. There, there is no character really here with with Amy, and uh, that means that the coming of age story it has to be you know just very by the books. Like you know, oh she, you know, oh she wants to you know be free. She wants to do stuff that other girls are doing, but she can't because she's in a religious household. It's like yeah, obviously the, yeah. I've seen this. Yeah, seen this yeah you know what it, it it reminds you of in a in God's Not Dead. There is this uh, this one. Uh, Muslim woman who is, is she, she comes into, she gets dropped off by her dad and her dad says something, you know, like, um, you know, you, you need to wear your, your, your headscarf because, uh, Muslims hate women. Anyway. And then, then she gets out and then this Christian woman who's, you know, going to church sees her and says, you're beautiful. I wish you didn't have to wear that. And then, uh, and then she, she smiles, the, the Muslim woman smiles. And, and in the end, she ends up, uh, uh, getting saved. And then her dad goes, what are you doing listening to the Bible? And he starts like hitting her, you know, like normal. Anyway, what I'm basically saying is in a way, that's kind of what this film felt like. And it was, uh, you know, just just, just the uh, the analysis of uh, the thing. No, I'm kind of I'm kind of being a bit uh, mean, but no, it is kind of like it, it's very easy to just say uh, religion is or can be oppressive for women, and obviously it's, uh, it's also true that um, lots of let's say third world countries. Uh, can be a little further back. I mean, uh, women's rights is a good indication of development. So certainly, this is yeah, all kind of more, obvious stuff. And I, I think it's unfortunate. More likely this to be socially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And also, I think it kind of works the other way. Like, the more women are out there actually doing things instead of just making kids, probably the better your country's going to be doing. The, the other thing is, I found the, um, 
the way it ends is is very abrupt and very shocking and it's kind of there's not really a satisfying okay actually you know i have to talk about this first uh the second act moment of this film is brought on in the most strange way and this isn't i don't think this is actually an example where you can accuse it of, of child sexualization because i think you don't actually see this but she takes a picture of her unobscured um family jewels but whatever the equivalent is for women. so go with that okay her unobscured vulva um her unobscured vulva <laughs> Like this car I got. No, uh, her unobscured Volvo. And, and she becomes, everyone then is really angry at her and her friends hate her. And okay, fine. But it's kind of weird because she just does it kind of, it, it feels kind of out of nowhere. And then it, it just like, it, it was a very strange second yeah, because act. Because she, well, she doesn't have a character. So she just does stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, because obviously in, in films, you get second acts. That's the thing. And it's usually, you know, sometimes you'll get weird experimental films, so you don't do it. But a lot of the time it's quite a reliable thing where in the middle you have a moment where everything kind of goes dodgy for them. But in, in this film, one, it kind of feels like a bit of a constant second act. Cause usually you would have kind of like a situation where she starts off in a situation, she starts to get happy in some way. And then there's a, a thing that causes everything to go wrong. And then obviously, eventually there's a, there's a resolution and you're kind of like, okay, that's, that's happy. In this film, she's never really, she doesn't seem that happy. There's not like- I've got a solution. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm glad she's- Oh yeah, I can so this. So the issue I do have with this movie is Amy, you know, she is the one who is shy, new to the group, new to the cuties, but right away she convinces all of the girls to drop their previous dance and do this, you know, sexy, suggestive dance. Uh, yeah, naturally. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the thing. She's she is new to the group. So what should happen is there's this dance competition that they fail at. They lose to this group of older girls who dance, you know, like the cuties eventually do. It's just so hilarious calling this group the cuties. Uh, God. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so yeah. Just just call them the minions. That's much better. <laughs> the minion. Uh, so after that, Amy convinces the girls to do what this group of older girls did. You know, dance more suggestively, because, you know, she's determined to win. And that would have been a better plot, because then you would have had that second act moment where she's getting along, you know, with the girls, and then you would realise, oh, you know, for girls to stand out in this world, uh, you know, if girls want success, they're going to have to, you know, sexualise themselves. So I think it would have enhanced the message, it would have made the plot better, and yes, it would have been, I guess, you know, by the numbers kind of kind of thing, but I, I think that would have worked. And then you get a better act structure, like you said, uh, cause I, do, I, I'm, no, yeah, that's, that's, I think, I think you're yeah. right. Basically, it's kind of like in a walk the line where, uh, Johnny Cash shows up with his band and the guy's like, well, we, we've had it with this gospel music. We want something new. And then Johnny Cash just randomly starts singing his, his, you know, Johnny Cash, uh, Johnny Cash stuff. And it's like, oh yeah, this is, this is good. This guy's new. And like, yeah, that's exactly how it happened. I assume. Brilliant. Uh, so basically done that, but instead of, uh, instead of, you know, when I was just a baby, my mama, it, it's, it's ghost twerking, you know? Similar no, things, yeah, really. Yeah, absolutely. Let's be honest. She, they, the cuties have to change because that's what, according to them, society yeah, demands. So, oh, society has rewarded these girls for you know dancing in very revealing clothing. So that's what we have to do, even though we're eleven. Enhances the plot. Oh, yeah. Um, enhances the enhances message. The message, you know, and stops the unrealistic thing, which is what happens in this movie. Like Amy just rocks up and changes all their dance moves. Yeah. No. Which, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely it. I, I mean, that's the kind of funny thing. It kind of feels like. I mean, we've already said it, but, uh, the, it, it, it's kind of everything is in service of the, uh, the sexual aspect, or, or I guess we'll say the, the, well, you know, whatever aspect, uh, which actually means that other stuff kind of gets screwed over. Uh, and, and the example of that is, yeah, so I was, I was going to say the, the final moment too is a bit weird where she kind of, she's doing this dance and then she stops dancing and she just like, yeah, she stops. And I had like no idea what was going on in her head. And like you said, she doesn't really have a character. And I think that is evidence by that. Yeah, like I said, I, she just stops dancing. And I'm like, j- confused why she stopped dancing. I don't really know why she stopped dancing. And then she's like crying. And I'm like, okay. And then she runs away. And I'm like, okay, she's, she's run away. Like, oh, that's fine. So I guess that, that's like a thing that happened. But yeah, there's no, there's no real moment where you kind of feel it. And I guess that's kind of the issue. Like I say, there are some moments in this film where you do, feel something like as i say you kind of do feel the impact of the uh the bigamy stuff and you feel sorry for this this girl that she's kind of exposed to a lot of the negative mm-hmm. aspects of traditional uh femininity in this you know uh muslim immigrant culture and at the same and obviously living in in a kind of relatively more free western society with regards to women's rights so obviously you could make some criticism of that but let's not get into that um well, it, well, definitely relatively. That's not, you can't make any criticism, but it's relatively better. Um, so you kind of feel sorry for her that she's in this situation, but you know, that's, 
not the main thing, which is weird. Like the, uh, and the, the main thing that this film has kind of just feels like that's not really working. This film almost feels like it should be called, um, bigamy. That's what I call this film. I wouldn't call it cutie. I call it bigamy because that's the main thing it really sells you on. You're like, yeah, man, bigamy would suck. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So you're saying the, the sexual, yeah, there's no, um, a message against the sexualization of kids. It's just that she's unhappy doing it up on the stage. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And also, I don't... Yeah, I guess, I mean, I wouldn't... Yeah, Yeah. so, yeah, I wouldn't express it necessarily in terms of messaging, but more, because I think we're going to get into that in a bit, but kind of the emotional aspect of it, or kind of the filmmaking aspect of it. So I'm not necessarily saying that the film doesn't criticize, because I think it kind of implicitly criticizes it by being like, oh, she doesn't like doing it, but it's kind of like, it doesn't really dissect and communicate why she doesn't like it. Yes, that is a good point. So kind of, it does kind of say it's wrong, or maybe not it's wrong, but like, it's something which obviously many people could object to. Yeah, you're right, she's up on that stage and she randomly starts crying and running off, and... Well, she really wanted to do this, didn't she? She really wanted to perform this dance act in front of all these people, and now all of a sudden, she, she, she's really upset. So why is that? Why doesn't she like sexualizing herself now? You, you are right. There should be something uh, additionally that you know that that like you said, the movie should dissect that more and get into why she feels so unhappy doing that. But you know, she just runs off and she's upset. So that'll do, I guess. Uh, but yeah, she and like you said, the other section of the movie about the oppressiveness of the situation she is in it fully you fully understand why she would hate that situation she would hate cutting those onions and you know uh she would hate that her mother has to be at this wedding uh for her her dad and his second wife you you get all that but you don't get why at the end where she she doesn't like what she's doing up there on that stage uh so michael shall we move on then uh i guess to the sexualization and, yeah, and let's do that. talk about it because obviously it's hard to mention this movie without mentioning this. Yeah. Uh, and we, we're going to really talk about it now uh, because, yeah, there are some moments in this film which uh, do, do raise some eyebrows, let's say. So if they mm. just kept it at selfies and, you know, the clothes they were buying, that would be fine. But no, they, <laughs> the, the, the the director, you know, she, she wanted. She, she goes wanted for some it. attention for this movie. That's what I'm going to say. She wanted some attention. And to be yeah, fair, we are talking yeah, I think about it. There's we are definitely talking about publicity. it, so it worked. Um, so, you yeah. know, you get the standard stuff about this girl, Amy, fitting into this group who are quite different. But then 45 minutes in to the movie, I think. Yes, yes, I I, I got the timestamp too. 45 minutes in, uh, she's humping the yeah, ground. This is when it changes. We have the scene where Amy is teaching all the girls how to twerk and she's slapping their butts. And it's like, this is just completely different to what we've seen so far. You know, if you were watching this movie having no idea what it was, you'd get to the scene and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? This is just ratcheted up to another level, um, which is just, it's crazy. Um, afterwards, they do this dance on a flight of stairs, uh, which is just for the camera. You know, all the girls like twerk. Yeah, yeah, that was a weird one. I was like looking, I was like, is, and I was thinking in my head, is someone filming yeah. this? Yeah, well, they like, the they establish that someone's they, filming they it? All, they all but look no, at yeah. the camera. So it's just for, like, the film. That the, the, doesn't serve the plot. So that's a weird scene right there. Uh, then there's, this girl pulls Amy's jeans down, showing her underwear. Um, and then they go and, they oh, go yeah, and yeah. buy lingerie from some stores as well. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I guess that's. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but still pretty weird. Uh, and then here's what another scene I find weird. Uh, it's her mother and this elderly woman. She's called Auntie, I think. Yeah. They're throwing stuff at her, you know, because she's a whore, apparently, um, causing her to, like, convulse. That's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a weird scene. It was a weird scene. scene. I was but trying I, to I was getting that. what they were doing. And then they show a close-up of her butt, which is just not necessary, not just in general. But that mm. scene is not meant to be sexualizing her, is it? It's not. So yeah. why sh- why show it? And again, I go back to like this director just so wanted attention, so wanted people to talk about this movie and these shots of these kids. That's the only thing I can think about with you know the the scene that uh, when they're on the stairs, just no service to the plot, and that scene right there. And of course, and then there's the end where you have the dance, which again is just so ridiculous and absurd that it becomes hilarious. Um, no, which was, of course, uh, what we... Uh, I, that was the clip that was going viral on Twitter last week. Uh, unsurprisingly, I have to say, like I said at the time, yeah, I can I, I can understand why people are quite annoyed at that and why people would say, what the fuck is this? Because yeah, that was a uh, that was something else. So yeah, that, I think I've mentioned all the all the times 
um, that, it, that I guess, yeah, you mentioned, of course, before in uh, when we talk about the plot, like when she takes a picture uh, of her of her vulva, but yeah, you, yeah, you know, you don't see it, and it's like that. That's not sexual. That's something I could imagine happening in a, another movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that was that's fine. No issue with that, but yeah, it's the explicit shots of you know her and all the rest of the cuties just you know exposing themselves, and it's like. Yeah, that like I go back to what I said initially. The director definitely wanted some attention from this because there are just some baffling shots and scenes. Which, yeah, a kick, this can be about sexualizing children, sure, and how that's bad. But you're, it's it becomes gratuitous at some points, and that is that is an issue. I think. What do you think? No, yeah, I, I think it is gratuitous. I, I will say this: um, Have you ever seen the film Little Miss Sunshine? Uh, I have not. No. Okay, so basically, uh, it, it's really funny because uh, it, it's basically the plot is that there's this little girl. I, I don't know how old she is. She's quite young, but she wants to go compete in a talent show in, in Los Angeles. So basically the entire family goes on a road trip to go get her to the talent show. Um, because she's been working on this routine with her granddad. Uh, and anyway, basically they get to the, the, um, talent show and the talent show, her performance is literally just her doing this very bad, overly sexual dance to Super Freak by, um, you know, the guy who did Super Freak, I've forgotten his name. But basically, the thing is, it, it's a joke. Like, the thing is, it, it's supposed to make you kind of, like, laugh because it's funny that she really wanted, like, the whole film's been building up to her doing this performance. And the performance is, like... And also, she's, like, kind of fat. And she's just, like, doing this, uh, perf- you know, sexy dance to Super Freak. And you just go... And then the parents are, like, cringing, like, oh, no. And that's what I felt like when you got to the final dance performance. And I was just, like... I have to admit, I found it kind of funny, uh, because it was so. No, it is funny. I think it is funny. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's so, so over the top. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of, and, and I think the other weird thing about it is that you don't really, like I say, you haven't really connected to these, these people, these children, which makes it feel less real. So it's kind of just like, again, it, it sort of feels like if someone posted on like the cringe subreddit, uh, uh, this the, these um, I can't think of what grade they'd be in, but you know these eleven year olds to do this this really sexualized dance at the talent show, and you go like, and, and you watch it like ooh, you know you, you cringe a bit and you kind of laugh maybe because you're somebody who laughs when you're uncomfortable, and that that's kind of how this film felt because you didn't connect to them. I know we were speaking about this, but I think that kind of makes the uh, that aspect feel worse. And yeah, I do also agree with you. I think it was for because the decoré knew that it would cause controversy and get them attention i I will say one thing i do appreciate about this film i think a lot of films can be very naive about just how uh aware of these kind of things tweens can be like i remember when i was 11 i liked boobs did you like boobs when you were 11 luke uh periodically Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> we all had uh, the good old boobs back in the day. You know, we all liked uh, the old eight thousand and eight five on our on our calculator. Um, and, and you know, I, I think it is it's realistic in some ways. I think in other ways it's gratuitous. In other ways it's realistic. And I think I don't know. There's definitely a, a happy medium between realistic and get the camera out of those girls' butts, uh, which I guess leads us on to uh, a good point, which is does the fact that this film um, depicts these things mean it's endorsing them? What do you think, Luke? Well, that is the the question, I guess. Can you do this kind of movie and say, no, we're we're, we're criticizing uh, the sexualization of kids because you know the fact is all the incidents we have mentioned before are meant to serve a bigger purpose, which is look how awful this is. Uh, and to be fair, you know the movie showing what happens at the end uh, when you know she leaves her outfit behind shows, yeah, sexualization is bad, and she doesn't like it. Even though we discussed, we don't. The movie doesn't really get into why that's the case, why she doesn't like it, why she rejects it. But here's the thing. I don't think you can show kids being sexualized and fake it. And of course, that's what movies are, that everything's fake. It doesn't happen uh, in real life, You're apart from, of, of course, documentaries. You're just filming people acting. But you can show somebody murdering someone in a movie, and it'd be fake, of course, and somebody being raped in a movie, and it can be fake, of course. Even genocide, all the worst crimes in history. You can show yeah. it, and it can be fake. Are you saying? I'm sorry, Luke. Are you saying that uh, there are some genocides that are fake? That's exactly what I'm saying. Is that no, okay? I'm saying like Steven Spielberg can fake the Holocaust, and he doesn't actually have to recreate it to make a movie about it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that would be a very different world. <laughs> yes. Like, like, oh man, Schindler's List was good. But do you really have to kill all those people? Yeah, yeah. We, we just had to. Well, I guess Mulan maybe is uh is changing that. Yeah, they've got enough of them. Uh, what? In like, I'm just saying, like, there's loads of people in China, so it's fine because like, they, like, oh, extras well, have got to be dirt cheap. The Uyghur Muslims. 
Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. There's probably not so many of them nowadays. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm like, fun. yeah, it's pro- probably not the best thing to say. They've got enough of them. Uh, anyway, so you cannot fake child sexualization unless the actresses involved are 18 years old because they're not kids anymore, and that obviously can't work if you are portraying an 11 year old. You can't have 18 year olds pretend to be 11 year olds. Uh, that's just not going to work. So that's the thing. You can't, I don't think it's possible to fake child sexualization. Like you can't fake it because it is what it is on the screen. There's kids, they're being sexualized. That's, that's what it is. So it's very hard to make a movie showing how bad child sexualization is without sexualizing kids, you know? And yes, it's, I, and you can't do it. Like I said, you can fake a murder. You can't, you can't fake this. It's impossible. Especially if you're going, if your kids are 11 years old, because you're going to find it very difficult for someone who is 18 to look like they are 11. Uh, what do you think? No, no, yeah. I mean, I, I think I agree. I, I mean, obviously, you're right, Luke. Um, congratulations. No, I mean, it's definitely true that you can't, um, it, literally depicting it is, is, is doing it. Uh, I mean, obviously, there are con- contextual things, I guess. Like, for example, you can say, uh, that if you, you could argue it's not really doing it if you're kind of doing it for some kind of greater purpose. Uh, but that's the thing, that, you that are is, doing it though. Yeah, that's if the thing, yeah. Are, so I guess that's You can't it. get around you are it. Like, doing you are it. showing yeah, yeah. these kids in, you know, revealing clothing, you know. That, that's what you are doing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess, I guess the, the main question then is, is, is it, is it actually the literal doing of it that makes it as bad as it is? Or is it the way, and the message you're trying to get from it. Cause I guess that's, that's kind of the argument I can see a lot of people making would be, um, so sorry, the, the negative argument I can see a lot of people making would be, well, uh, there is nothing stopping a, a pedophile from watching this and enjoying it a, in a bad way. You know, there's nothing stopping a pedophile from watching <laughs> no, they this. They really like and, the story. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. There's nothing stopping a pedophile from watching this and being like, yeah, this is, this is sexualization of 11 year olds and this is my jam. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. Where, there's yeah. nothing. Whereas, nothing of stop course, them. so, so even. Yeah, so so even if you can say, well, the the intent was to do you know this thing, somebody watch it. But then well, I guess you could say, I'm sorry, you can't jack up yeah, to yeah. this because the intent is to show that yeah. this is bad. Sorry, put put your dick away. It's, it's not going to work. Yeah. It doesn't work. Right but now. then, but but then I think you could make an argument that there there could be a film which has a similar plot to this, which could be excusable. I mean, I will say so. I am a big fan of films. Uh, depicting things and not even offering internal moral critiques of those things and just leaving it is. I mean, this actually goes back to the old, um, there was, there was a whole hoo-ha about, uh, three billboards where, of course, you get the, the, uh, guy Dixon, his, his racism is never confronted really in the film. And lots of people said, well, you know, if you're going to have a racist character, you need to have their racism confronted. And I said, well, one of the things I like about the film is it doesn't, it, it sometimes just has things, it just presents them and it doesn't really interrogate them in any way. And that's something I can kind of appreciate. I think it's sort of grown up. Um, and that is something I appreciate, but of course, in this case, you could say, well, the difference is when, when Dixon's being racist, he isn't really being racist because, you know, racism is, is about intent and things like that. Uh, whereas child sexualization, it's not about intent. It's literally if, if a child's on screen and they're doing lots of sexual stuff, that is child sexualization. And I, I think that is an issue. But having said that, I do think you have to give, there is a degree of leeway you would have to give where I think it should be. And I would agree in, in the interest of artistic freedom, it should be possible for somebody to make a film that does have elements of child sexualization and there should be limits of course so for example you can't have a naked child which would you know constitute child pornography i mean if you're making a film for example about you know a, a literal pedophile you can't have a scene of pedophilia taking place involving an underage actress or actor that would not be okay uh, but then there are some things where i'd be like you know what like, i think this film probably could have had at least some of the sexualization of children and if it then had other stuff going for it i'd be like you know what it, it's still objectively sexualization. There's still the fact that a pedophile could, you know, watch it and be like, yeah, I'm into this. But at the end of the day, you know, you okay. do have a degree of artistic expression and things yeah, like well, that. So well, that's kind of my opinion. I'm not, I'm not advocating for this to be taken off Netflix or, you know, you can't watch this movie. No, I'm just saying we can criticize it for this. Uh, and yes, you, you, you can make a movie like this. Go ahead. Like the core, she's made this movie. She's, she's, it's on Netflix. We've watched it. You know, she wants people to watch it, and and we have them. But we can criticize it and say, yeah, uh, this this is bad. What she has done in this movie, 
uh, you know, she can she can have the artistic expression that all all of that she likes as long as she isn't breaking any laws. And like we've said before, this movie doesn't break any laws, so we're all good there. But we can just criticize it, and uh, we can say basically your your reasoning for showing all this. No, it doesn't. It doesn't fly. It it doesn't work. You cannot. No. Yeah. 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 I th- I think that's yeah. it because that's the thing. I do. I do think. I guess what I'm getting at is that I wouldn't necessarily. So I do think what you're saying about how it is literally sexualizing children is a valid point but i would argue it's probably not the most important point i would say the most important point is kind of the intent and i know we've kind of spent a lot of time saying well the intent uh you know but i, I don't think the intent doesn't matter i think the intent doesn't change the fact it's literal the intent um, changes sexualization it slightly. but yeah yeah i would say the the fact that but but here's the thing see i would argue is kind of there's, there's intent and i guess there's the competence of how that intent is portrayed and i think that's the issue so essentially you can say like and, and the issue is that i think uh she she doesn't do a good job at uh making it feel how it should feel i, I guess which is you know if you know what i'm saying so in other words I, I could forgive, I, I'll say this, so I could forgive the literal presence of children being sexualized in a film if the film really did a good job and really justified having that by kind of getting across and being like, you know, the reason I had to no, have that's just these children being sexualized is... message or, or theme, isn't it? It's just like, oh, enhance the message, but the fact is if the scenes are still, that we saw, are still in this movie, then it's still doing, it's still sexualizing kids. Like, it is it's doing what it is doing on, on screen, and there is no getting around that like oh you could condemn it more you could have a better reason why this is this is what's happening up on the stage is really bad but no you, you can't get away with it yeah you know you this woman tried to make a movie about how sexualizing kids was bad but ended up sexualizing kids that's just this is just how it is uh and that's that's the thing we we can debate over her intent and obviously the intent i i think was a uh, i have a cynical view she wanted attention for it uh, that's why she did it so much. Uh, or, or she was incompetent. Or she was incompetent, but probably. Pro- Come on, Luke. Let's be probably fair. Probably not, yeah. because every person. No, no, no. Is- yeah. And I should say, actually, it was a pretty well put together film in terms of shot exactly, composition. Yeah. You know, we haven't mentioned this. The film. Okay, see, this sounds like a dodgy thing. The film looked good. But I realize that could mm. be taken out of context. Yes. In terms of the shot, I really like oh, no, some so shots. Even that sounds yes. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some shots I thought were really Artistic. well done. Good, good use of the yeah rule of thirds or whatever it is. <laughs> You know, just, just like, anyway, no, <laughs> no. no, but uh, you, you get what I'm saying. There are like some yeah. well done shots but, out, outside of the context yes, of the yes, stuff. But that's the thing. It's like the whole situation. Like I said, you're, you're trying to make a movie about how sexualizing kids is bad and you end up sexualizing kids. It is an inherently hilarious scenario as I compare it to All the Sunny in uh, Philadelphia and Frank's Little Beauties. I think that's what it called the beauty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it is, it is like that. It's like, this is the one thing that we didn't want to happen. Have you, do you know where that clip's from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from, uh, like, the, uh, what's it called? Brass Eye? Yeah, Brass Eye, when they send a pedophile up into space. <laughs> and unfortunately, the mistake was made, and a, a, an eight-year-old boy was trapped on the, uh, <laughs> on the, uh, on the pod as well. Yes. S- stranded in space with the monster. <laughs> yeah, the scientists were in shock uh, as they realized uh, what had happened. This is this the, is one, the thing. one thing we didn't want to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that is, <laughs> that, that shot, that, I'm oh, sorry, that, uh, that sketch, but the movie. This is the one thing we didn't want to happen. We really wanted to condemn sexualizing kids, but we actually actually made a movie that ended up sexualizing kids. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it is hilarious, but at the same time, yeah, you, you're, you're not getting away with it. I'm sorry, you're not getting away with it. Uh, you can say, well, this was the message, this was the theme. Uh, oh, you know, the in- intent matters, but like you can't, you can't fake this. You can fake pretty much everything else in cinema, in movies, but you, you can't fake this. The fact is that is an 11 or 12 year old up there on a stage wearing extremely revealing clothing. And there's no getting around that. No matter how much, uh, you know, Decoré or anyone else, or any other French person who's in the French film industry would like to get around it. You can't get around it. That is my position. And it is the correct position. Well done. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, so actually, I, I think one thing I wanted to talk about under, uh, uh, you know, this kind of topic is, is what I see to be the, um, the over intellectualizing of things in a, a bad direction. And I will say, you know, I, I don't think this film so. I don't think this film is, is certainly as bad as it could have been. But I, I do think. Remember in um, the back in the day when it was like a thing when when gay marriage was still being debated, and there were some people saying things like, you know, well, if, if two gay people can get married, why can't a, 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 a an adult and a child get married? And the whole world kind of correctly said, well, that's a, a stupid, um, you know slippery slope fallacy and there's there's not really any any argument to be made there but i do think that there, there is a a concern 
that I think a lot of the time you can get in, in certain academic circles, a desire to, and it is something you, you do see, uh, and I think this film can be a bit of an example of that, of trying to really be academic about everything to the extent that you come up with really counterintuitive results. And I think that the, a lot of the response to this film has kind of been, been an example of that, where it is kind of, and I think here's the thing. So I think that we both have somewhat more nuanced takes than, you know, the, uh, right wing Twitter sphere who were just saying, you know, unequivocally, I would proof that hope so. yeah, but, um, but at the same time, there are other people who are really far in the other direction where like, well, the fact that this film is, is, is being, you know, intelligent and, you know, being, being real man is, uh, is, is, is proof that it's actually completely fine. And I'll say this, okay. Something I've become increasingly distressed about is the fact that, uh, most other people in the world aren't as smart as me. No, because a lot of the time, I, I remember back in the day, I used to be very naive when I'd argue with right wing people. And I'd say, you know, they, they'd make a kind of stupid deduction about a certain thing. So they'd say like, you know, uh, white privilege. Doesn't that mean that all white people are stupid and need to apologize? And I'd say, no, it just means that, you know, white people have certain advantages that they've inherited from the past, blah, blah. And then you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then you, you're like, okay, yeah, great. And then you, you see on Twitter, like footage of, of white people, um, uh, getting on their knees, apologizing for slavery and like, uh, you know, uh, Portland or something. You're like, okay, well, see, these people, you kind of ruined it because these people literally have the stupid right wing person. Like it's like when left wing people have the stupid right wing interpretation of left wing concepts. And you're like, why would you do this? And I kind of feel like that's what you get with, with this kind of thing where a, a stupid right-wing person would say like, oh yeah, but the, you know, if, if you're making a film and you're like uh, depicting something, well, you know, uh, if you're, they, they would kind of ignore all the nuance and they'd be like, well, you know, um, if you're saying that children do have a degree of like sexual awareness, then you're saying it's okay to have sex with children. You say, no, that's stupid. No one's saying that. Just saying, you know, it's something that we should be aware of and acknowledging it shouldn't be considered a, a terrible thing. And yet I do feel like there are some scary people in the world who literally have done that. I feel like a lot of the argument for the kind of pedophile rights thing which is i don't want to act as if there's a real like huge problem because it obviously isn't but it is a thing which does exist there are like genuinely some weird people out there even some people in like proper academic circles who have started saying some kind of weird pedophile rights things and a lot of time their argument will be children of varying ages are to some extent sexually aware therefore you can have consensual sex with a child and obviously that's really stupid and the issue with this film is that I, i'm like okay yeah i like that this film in a way, kind of like this film does acknowledge that there can be a degree of when we put all of this sex, hypersexualized content out there, the reality is children are going to consume it and it is going to impact how they behave. And you're going to see children behaving in increasingly sexualized ways. And that is something which I can understand they feel wanting to draw attention to. But I also feel like there are a, a load of really dodgy people out there who are going to watch this film and be like, yeah, see, exactly. That's what we've been saying. These children, they want to be sexual. And that is dodgy to me. And it's annoying, but yeah. yeah. What do you think? Well, we just need to be the, uh, the rational centrists in, know, yeah, in these it, yeah. discussions and go go down the middle path, which I think we pretty pretty much have done. Uh, yeah, in, like heroes. Yeah, exactly, like 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 the heroes we are. And uh, the, another, well, this is a good segue because there is another message in this movie that isn't just down to child sexualization. Um, it is um, talking about the religious, I guess, intolerance. Maybe that's the best word of uh, yeah. certain religions. And of course, uh, Amy, she is a woman. She grows up in a traditional Muslim household it in france uh, she must cook and clean and be uh, faithful to her husband and do what uh, the husband wants and all of that stuff she has to put up with her dad having two wives and abandoning her and her mum. and obviously she this movie is meant to show you know that amy should leave uh, the world of child sexualization behind and also the world of uh religious oppression i guess behind uh when she leaves both her her outfits on her bed, you know, to go play outside, yeah, you know, that, that's what it's that's what it's saying. And how powerful is that? So powerful. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's yeah that that is the rational centrist approach to things. Let's not let's not be a whore, but let's not you know also uh, dress up um, with all these sheets on your head. You know, let's let's keep it down the middle. I think that's what this film is uh, is saying. So uh, what do you think about that? No, yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's interesting because obviously um, it, it's interesting in this film. I know we're going to kind of talk about this aspect a bit in, uh, quite shortly, but um, there, there has been an interesting political, like people drawing political lines on this film, like, uh, you know, a divide on this film politically. And yet it's kind of weird because this film is quite 
overtly critical of, of Muslims, which or, or I guess you'd say Islam, which is, is something where usually, you know, the kind of right wing people are like, oh, the left is afraid to criticize Islam. In this case, they can't say that. So at least that's one thing that's going for it. And, and it should point out, by the way, I actually found it interesting. There was a line where um, a woman said the majority of people uh, in hell will be women. And fun fact, you know, I don't really have anything to say about the problem that is a fun fact. That is actually based on a, a hadith in Islam, where it says the majority of people in hell will be women. I was like, yeah, that's a... So I, I think it's interesting that they do make a Christian. Although I think within the context of being at France, one of the things that France is really famous for is being hyper -sec secular. Um, so I think it kind of makes sense. That's because obviously France has like the Burqa ban, things like that. So it's not really surprising. I think a lot of... Um, Americans who are idiots and don't understand, that, and to be fair, lots of British people are idiots too, who, d who kind of only see things through the political spectrum of, of their own country. And they think like, oh, the left are the people who really love Muslims. If, if they actually watch this film, I imagine they'd probably be confused because they'd be like, hold on a minute. I thought this film was all about the left. Yeah, it's criticizing Islam. Obviously in France, it's quite common for people on the left to criticize Islam. Um, in a way that it's not as common for people on the left in uh, America and the UK too for Various reasons that don't really matter, but again, France does have much more of a history of being hyper secular. So uh, that that was an interesting thing, which I feel like it's interesting that no one else has brought up that it's literally, and it's also interesting. I've not heard anything about Muslims objecting to this film. I don't know if you if you ever looked into that at all, or saw anything about that. Well, but m what cultural power do Muslims have? That, that that's the thing. That yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, us aware of that. Yeah. Although I mean, we say that, but obviously it's kind of funny because um, like uh, Charlie Hebdo, of course, the reason the news because it got. Well, oh yeah, but nobody knew about Charlie Hebdo and like yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah, so Muslims are only good at making things famous through killing people. They're not very good at, uh, <laughs> well, at stopping that's things. That's all they can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like what we're getting at really here must be that a lot of these um, Islamic extremists they actually uh, they only exist to make things popular. So they're like, oh, it's a film about a Muslim who starts twerking. Oh, it's fine. That's already popular. That would be uh, hilarious. If this film, yeah, if they, yeah, if this film ha <laughs> yeah, if they like uh, killed the uh, the director Decore, these Muslims, and then all the right wing uh, people who were against this movie, just just we Decore. <laughs> yeah, had to come out supporting cuties. <laughs> yeah, that'd be just like yeah. Uh, um, no, no, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. So obviously, the um, but in general, so that was just kind of talking about political context. So I, I do think it's a uh, an interesting thing. I mean, it's 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 fine. I mean, to be fair, I would say the film kind of it's almost like a background thing where it's not as if the film really critiques in a meaningful sense. You know, it, the film's not really about a religious exploration. I guess is what I'm saying. So it's not like a film. Like, I don't know. A serious man, where it's about somebody trying to understand their situation in the world relative to their belief in a uh, higher power or anything like that. Um, or, well, you know, lots of other films. Passion of the Christ. No, that's an obvious one. No, but, you know, like a film that really kind of tries to have a religious exploration. In this film, the religious stuff is really just a background for uh, her situation. So really, it's more about kind of just conservative values in general. And I would say, yeah, I mean, it's certainly the idea of the, the middle ground thing kind of makes sense it is something you see a lot like uh this idea of like yeah well you know wearing a burqa is pretty oppressive but so is strutting around in your bikini for the male gaze that's also uh kind of oppressive he's being a rational and, centrist on this like michael like we said yeah but, no yeah. yeah i mean that's the thing is it is a rational centrist. i mean to be fair i think it is an example of where it's I, I think one of the issues of rational centrism is a lot of the time it's kind of correct but in like a way where it, it's you have to understand why it's the case and it's sort of not necessarily that rational centrism is true but rather that any form of absolutism is often wrong so it's pretty obvious to say like that like oh yeah the more the more skin you show the more uh, sexualized you are the more empowered empowered and, and liberated you are i mean there's loads of people talking about um this is actually relevant you know the, the cardi b song uh wet ass pussy you heard the song the uh, the wet ass pussy song Luke? i heard the ben shapiro version of it I know. Yeah. Did you hear? It's like if if your if your pussy's really wet, there's something wrong with it. Oh yeah, he did tweet that, didn't he? That was great. That was Wonderful. so oh, like just. I mean, how, imagine telling on yourself like that. Anyway, can we find a the, middle the ground here, folks? You know, this is yeah, that's, that's the thing. When Joe Biden becomes president, this will this this film yeah. will stop. Actually, no. Well, that's the thing. The film kind of promotes the Joe Biden message, but just does it in yeah, a way exactly. which yeah. Obviously, we, we have criticised, but uh, yeah. let's get and let's not let's not talk about Joe Biden and uh, being creepy around little kids. Ah, let's be real. Good point. It. But we're getting into the political reaction anyway. And actually, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that now. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, Joe Biden is going to get mentioned here if I can fucking click on the Wikipedia page. So here we go. And uh, basically, there's a whole section on Wikipedia for the U.S. political responses because even though this is a French film, obviously, uh, uh, American politicians had to get involved. Uh, U.S. Senator Josh Hawley of Missouri. Uh, invited Netflix to discuss the film before Congress in a tweet. 
uh, which is just incredible. Yeah, uh, great, love it. U.S. Senator Mike Lee of Utah sent a letter directly to Netflix CEO Reed Hastings and requested an explanation on Hastings' view as to whether or not the potential exploitation of minors in this film constitutes criminal behaviour. As, you know, he already knows the answer is no, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, U.S. House Representative and former Democratic primary contender Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii explicitly called the film uh. child porn and that it would whet the appetite of paedophiles and help fuel the child sex trafficking trade. Mm, which is interesting. Mm. We'll come back to that. U.S. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas sent a letter to the Department of Justice to investigate whether Netflix is executives or the filmmakers violated any federal laws against the production and distribution of child pornography. Uh, Christine Pelosi, daughter of U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, uh, said that cuties hypersexualizes girls my daughter's age, and no doubt to the delight of paedophiles like the ones I prosecuted. Nice humble brag there, Christine. Wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas uh, and Representative Jim Banks of Indiana also criticised the film in separate statements, calling for the DOJ, the Department of Justice, to take legal action against Netflix, with Cotton saying there's no excuse for the sexualization of children. And Netflix's de- uh, decision to promote the film Cuties is disgusting at best and a serious crime at worst. Uh, so yeah, uh, also state attorneys of Ohio, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas have also written to Netflix uh, asking for removal of the film. Uh, is this cancel culture, Michael? I, I thought the writer uh, were very unhappy about cancel culture, but apparently yeah. not. No, look, uh, here, here we go. I, I just uh, I favorited Senator Ted Cruz's tweet about uh, sexual exploitation of children. Uh, it's wrong and it's disgusting. The Justice Department has to. Uh, has to prevent this. That's why I'm urging Attorney General Barr to investigate if anyone involved in Netflix cuties violated federal child pornography laws. So this is all very interesting, of course, because the answer is no, they didn't. They Obviously, they didn't, and uh, Forbes covered that. But all these, uh, of course, we talked about Christine Pelosi and Tulsi Gabbard, uh, but uh, maybe not Tulsi Gabbard. You know, she couldn't, she's not really left-wing, but I mean... No, yeah, she's just, she's just a Russian agent. Yeah, well, she's, I guess... All these right wing Republicans are talking about this, and Tulsi Gabbard, although she's a Democrat, she's not really a Democrat. Of course, Christine Pelosi is, but she's a, she, you know, she's the only Democrat or Democrat, you know, connected person nowadays that I've seen tweet about this. And it's all very interesting because, obviously, like we said in the cold open last week, um, the right wing in the United States, you know, they do this culture war thing. That's all they talk about. Uh, and of course, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died yesterday. R.I.P. to a legend. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> so that's what people are going to be talking about now. Really, the Supreme Court for the next like six weeks until the presidential election. Um, but before that, yeah, this was what they were talking about, like cuties, and because they are they are obsessed with the this culture war, and they are very keen for uh, people to try and. Sh- uh, well, for I guess people who are on the right side of the culture war, the right wing side of the culture war, to view the left wing as pro pedophilia and the right wing isn't and it's very easy for them to do that i I would assume because you know it's based on their religious upbringing uh you know that democrats are evil they worship demons etc uh which you know isn't far-fetched of course in america and of course is there anything more evil than child molesting so yeah I i i do think that people like ted cruz tom cotton they are desperately trying to make it so that people who you would call woke i guess are portrayed as pro pedophile um, and uh, yeah, I, I think w- even though this film is French, you know, I mistakenly said it was from Hollywood. You know, that that doesn't that's not going to stop them. Of course, you know, uh, I mean, we we all know how the French are, Michael. We we remember that yeah. film with Natalie Portman, don't we? Le- Leon the oh, Professional. Oh yeah, Leon. Yeah, exactly. It's an American movie, but you watch that and you're like, now nah, this has to be French, not just because of the main actor was French, but because of the, the storyline was was French as well. Yeah, they they got their cheesy mitts on. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, this there's it's also larger than just the culture war trying to you know say that all oh, the Democrats are pro pedophile. Um, we have to talk about Q or QAnon, Michael, because here's the thing. Yes, more like Q Q T and all. That's good. Tulsi Gabbard referred to uh, well, she said this movie would help fuel child sex trafficking trade, which is a quite a bizarre claim considering this movie really does not touch on sex trafficking at all. But of course, that's part of QAnon, isn't it? Like, all the elites are sex trafficking kids around the world. So Gabbard is, you know, signalling to Q supporters that uh, she's on her side there, yeah, which yeah, is quite yeah. interesting. And yeah, this this whole QC thing plays into the Q narrative like a hand in a glove. 
And yeah, this this kind of movie is just going to fuel the right wing conspiracies even more and make it even more mainstream. Forgetting you know the conspiracy theories uh, that uh, the left wing are pro, pro pedophilia or the Democrats are pro pedophilia. That's what this movie as is unfortunately going to do. That's why the United States, you know, so many senators, fucking senators, are tweeting about it. Uh, so what do you think, Michael? No, yeah, I mean, I, I think you're basically right. I think um, it's easy to, I mean, we, you mentioned Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's easy to forget that um, Republicans are evil. No, because basically the fact that um, RBG is now dead, it, it reminds you of the fact that the Republicans refused to vote on Obama's Supreme Court nomination in 2016 because they said you shouldn't vote for a Supreme Court nominee in an election year when the person who nominated that Supreme Court justice is literally going to be leaving office January of next year. Yeah, we all know. That, Michael, that was pretty much the, yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, now they have turned back on that and they're pretty much saying, nope, we're going to get through Trump's nominee as soon as possible before the election. You know, no, no worries about it. Um, and it just shows, and that's the thing. Like, and there's no sense of irony. There's no sense of like shame and it's insane. And basically it's kind of a similar thing. So it's sort of like, you know, are, are there, I mean, I have already said that, you know, I, I do think there is a genuine tendency for, people to be stupid and people to not have the ability to to understand things properly and to understand that like because you know i think for republicans i'll be like like i say i'll say any any semblance of acknowledging that people can have sexual interests you know before marriage um when they have their their wedding night um side hug uh any any semblance of that it would be considered absolutely abhorrent um but Obviously, uh, the, the lefts, and then you say, well, no, no, no. Obviously, you should be able to acknowledge that people can, you know, sexuality is a thing that's kind of innate. It's something that does develop uh, in complicated ways at a younger age. And that is something we should be comfortable discussing. But that doesn't mean we're advocating pedophilia. And then the issue is that you do then get these weird people who don't get that message. And they go, oh, yeah, you know, they they like it, really. So the problem is that those people do exist. The issue is the Republicans, of course, are going to pretend those people are a large proportion, which is not true. And that's that's the issue. I mean, the Republicans, you know, they, they could criticize the Democrats on good things, but then they wouldn't be Republicans. So it, it is just, it's it's stupid. But I think the issue is that, I mean, the, the fact that obviously this thing is happening with the uh, Supreme Court hypocrisy, and most people just aren't going to pick up on it. The reality is the Republicans have got down to a, a science, this attitude of being so insane and so ridiculous in our accusations that it's almost like you can't even really because what can the democrats do the democrats can't come out and go yeah um we don't support pedophilia well like, the best thing like, to do is just ignore work. it which is what exactly they, they've yeah. done i mean the only person to tweet about yeah. it yeah there's been no democratic representative in congress who's tweeted about this movie and right rightly so yeah exactly yeah, again it's just i'm just highlighting how desperate the really republicans are to portray you know that the left is pro pedophilia like i saw a good concern troubling tweet from a right wing account it's like you know because they they took this headline from the new yorker and it's like why are the right wing up in arms about cuties and they they were like well it's because it's pedophilia if if the left wing mm. aren't up in up in arms about this what what do, exactly does the left stand for and of course then the conclusion is, well, they have to stand for paedophilia. The Democrats are all paedophiles. And then, of course, it morphs into QAnon. And going through uh, Ted Cruz's Twitter account, like I did, he, he there was this uh, tweet which he he tweeted, uh, which was, uh, you know, it's not a conspiracy theory to think um, that Cuties is a ch- child porn or something like that. And... You know, it's it's true, but obviously he's he's trying to be like, hey, no, I'm not. This is this is not QAnon stuff. You know, he can dog whistle to, to QAnon people, but it is very much still, you know, these uh, right wing Republicans tr- trying to make it mainstream, as mainstream as possible, that the Democrats are pro pedophilia, and you know they can signal to QAnon every now and then, but they don't really want QAnon in on this discussion. Uh, but yeah, it, it definitely, I, the QAnon th- phenomenon is so is so weird, uh, which, you know, we need a whole new fucking segment to go into that. But yeah, it is just uh, just very interesting, basically, how uh, how many right-wingers in th- who are fucking senators. And, you know, there is a fair bit going on in the world right now, Michael. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, yeah, fair, yeah, I've noticed the thing yeah, too. Yeah, a fair bit going on right now. And uh, it's how many, how much they're tweeting about it. And uh, yeah, I guess the the thing that the Democrats can do, and they have been, is just ignore it. Just just ignore it. Make you know they can have their own little echo 
chamber and uh, just hope that the majority of the country doesn't share that view. And I don't think they do, which is good good for the Democrats. But yeah, um, certainly uh, it is is very interesting to see where uh, where this is going to end up because you already have people who are QAnon supporters who are going to be elected to the House of Representatives next year. They're going to win their elections. Uh, there's this candidate from Georgia who's pro QAnon who believes in it. Uh, so yeah, I, th- it'll be interesting to see. I've said that word so many times, but it is true how, how far this this kind of mindset that not just you know the the Democrats are pro pedophilia, which is you know already in the works, but how far the ne- the next level, which is QAnon, how much that actually seeps into the uh, right wing in in the United States politics. It's kind of weird because the Republicans have been crazy for a long time, like really since I kind of feel like. Bill Clinton was when they got really mental. And I, th- I feel like you've kind of mentioned this before, how it was pretty much Newt Gingrich and the moment when it was decided that the president cheating on his wife was an impeachable offense uh, was really like the moment where they were kind of crazy. Because let's be honest, you know, president cheating on his wife, that's not a good thing for there him to do. There have been stages. There have been stages of uh, yeah. ratcheting up. And we can go through them all, but obviously that would take a while. But yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think that is um, that is that brings the end to the discussion on the political reaction from QTs. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I I said before in one of the cold opens, that it was catnip to these right wingers. And they must have been pumping their fists when they saw this movie and it was released by Netflix and like... I, Ted Cruz said to Joe Biden, "Will you condemn cuties?" Because Barack Obama had a deal with Netflix, so he he therefore said, "Joe Biden, you need to condemn cuties." Just yeah, I I, I wanted to see an Onion article like Wisconsin uh, diners uh, can you know who are tempted to vote for Biden against Trump, concerned he hasn't said anything about cuties or something like that. And uh, I I also want to see uh, whoever the Supreme Court justice nominee is, I want to see them being asked about cuties. Uh, that's what I want to see to to fully, uh, you know, complete this uh, this saga. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that would be appropriate. We need to make sure um, that uh, the next Supreme Court just. I mean, tell you what, that's the thing. They could probably be like, um, you know, we need to get someone on the Supreme Court because if the left gets to, because obviously Joe Biden is a hardcore leftist. Yes. If if the left gets to nominate a Supreme Court justice, they'll they'll legalize pedophilia. Yeah, exactly. That, that that's uh, what they're giving down. Like you know, and and T for Black Lives Matter. The next thing is pedophilia. And that, yeah, obviously we can get more into it, but obviously uh, that is, yeah, that is undoubtedly a tactic of theirs now uh, to scare people that the Democrats are pedophiles. And yeah, the cute... Yeah, and it's just so stupid because this film, it's not really like, it's not part of a trend. No, really. that doesn't stop them. Like, that doesn't stop them. Exactly. You know, they, you know, like, nobody, like, that's the thing, it, it was top five in the United States. And uh, the thing is, nobody would have heard of this movie. Nobody would have cared about this movie if they didn't make a big deal about it. If I cancel Netflix, because it's in a fucking obscure French movie. You know, who is going to click on that? Um, you know, it, it, no, nobody. It's a fucking French movie. Okay, that, that's that's a no right off the bat. And it's not that, you know, it's not a fucking action movie or whatever. It's not going to get any, you know, attention until they made it get attention. Uh, yeah, and part of their reaction is why we're doing this movie right now. So they've won, Michael. They fucking won. Uh which yeah, which which is always the case, isn't it? But anyway, shall we conclude now? I talked for a while. You go first, Michael. Conclude on, on cuties. Yeah, the thing is, this this film it's a really difficult film to kind of rank in the. It's it's almost like the issue is the controversy around it kind of overshadows the film itself, and I think it is a shame because I, I do agree with you that I think the um the director De Decore really did want to use the controversy to her advantage. The controversy was uh, an intentional decision to. Uh, get people's attention. I, I do agree with you on that. And I think the issue is there that it means that a film that could have been interesting in, in some, some meaningful ways, uh, instead kind of just feels like, uh, yeah, a film which you can't really appreciate too much as a film, which is unfortunate because I do think, you know, there are some things about it. I mean, I will say genuinely, you know, memes aside, the, um, there were several moments in the films like, I can tell this is a wealth shot film where you know like the the colors are interesting the framing is interesting uh and the the sexualization aspect well i guess so sorry i should just say before i get into sexualization aspect the issue is i do think uh the the coming of age aspect isn't that well communicated i think part of that is a matter of quantity i think they could have they were, they just, it just didn't hit enough bases really but then i also think it's a matter of quality where the character doesn't you don't really get a real sense of who they are and you don't really get any I suppose actually we, we didn't really mention this, but you don't really get any scenes of the character kind of talking about stuff. Like you never really get a scene where a character has a proper conversation. Yeah, because they don't. Those characters doesn't have and, a character, like we said. Yeah, exactly. Which I think means that you know 
so you kind of miss something. Like I think a lot of other films you get a scene where she kind of talks to her best friend and like says something meaningful, like, but there really aren't any great dialogue scenes in this film, which I think is, it really holds it back. There are some kind of decently emotionally powerful scenes, but there's no great dialogue scenes, which means that you can't really get to know the characters properly. Um, and that's before getting to the sexualization aspect. And I do think in a way, the sexualization aspect, I don't think it affects my rating of the film too much. I, I think it's kind of one of those things where, uh, I'm, I'm not a pedophile. There we go. So to me, like I just see it and I, I take it as what it is, which is it's a depiction of sexualization of children because children can be in, you know, ch- children can be in ver- to varying degrees sexually aware at a young age. So whatever. Uh, d- the issue is that I don't think it does a great job at kind of communicating what it wants to go, but I feel that kind of comes down to the non-sexualized aspect. Like if, if the character itself, oh, sorry, herself had been built up properly, I think the sexualization stuff could have kind of slotted in there in a much more logical way. About, okay, I understand what this character's deal is, you know, wh- why they're doing what they're doing, the sense in which they consider it liberating or whatever else, uh, and also why it is that they eventually reject it and where they're going from there. And I could kind of forgive the sexualization aspect. Overall, yeah, I- I- I'm not going to really say that I rate this film badly because of the sexualization aspect. I'm not really outraged about it. You know, I, I saw the review by some guy called, uh, I think it's like Penguin something, and he is actually quite well subscribed. But it was just on my uh, my recommended, and he was literally saying like, "This film is disgusting. It makes me sick." And I just kind of think like, I watched it and I sort of cringe a bit. I think this is stupid, and I am aware there are potentially it, it could do real harm insofar as it could exacerbate people's pedophilic tendencies. But overall, from my perspective, someone just watching, it, I just thought well, this is just whatever. And it kind of yeah, like I say, it, it seemed like controversy baiting. It seemed maybe slightly incompetent. Like they really didn't know how to get it to come to something meaningful but overall with all that said I, i'm thinking a a high four on this one uh i'm gonna put it below uh sleepless in seattle but above bohemian rhapsody uh so i think that's a okay. nice place to put it uh well uh yeah I, I i'll say for this movie uh well we we said before that uh it's that thing from brass eye this is the one thing we didn't want to happen the movie but the thing is, the director <laughs> yeah. actually did want it to happen because she wanted some attention for the movie. Uh, that, that's that's how I feel. So yeah, she uh, she actually did want it to happen. And uh, yeah, you can say obviously, well, yes, there is. It's not disgusting, and yeah, you, like you said, it is cringy. But uh, yeah, it's still it's still sexualizing kids, and that that's gonna be there's gonna be a knock against it. Like if you were a pedophile, you would enjoy this movie. That, that, that's the bottom line, and uh, yeah, you have. To, I have to feel like I can criticize a movie if that is the case, uh, and yeah, I, I think overall, um, this reviewer from IndieWire sums it up quite well. Uh, Kate Erbland, uh, she wrote, although Decore steeps cuties in emotion and experience, again, I would say pr- probably not to that because yeah, she, <laughs> Amy doesn't really have a character. It's a by the numbers movie. Yeah, I wouldn't say yeah, steeps. She's likely to just. Do- Pepper, pepper. Yeah, she's maybe. likely to just do anything at any time because she's a complete canvas, and that stops it, you know, from becoming a good coming of age story. Uh, so yeah, let me just start again. Although Decore steeps cuties in emotion experience, I disagree. Uh, she abandons its grace to make crazier gestures, and that is what she does. Yep, and everybody's now focusing on you know the fucking twerking from an eleven-year-old girl uh, instead of the message of the movie. But that's kind of inevitable. Uh, it was always going to happen. So yeah, the crazy gestures. Yeah, definitely, uh, you have to knock it down uh, for that. Uh, and yeah, overall, it's uh, yeah, it's just not that interesting a movie, anyway. So I'm gonna give it a three point five out of ten uh, for for cuties. And uh, yeah, I know some some people would rank it very low, like a one out of ten. But yeah, I don't think it's like disgusting or whatever. It's just yeah, pretty pretty embarrassing. So some of the stuff, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, it's it's not really the the other stuff that could make up for it isn't that great either. Uh, so yeah, cuties three point five out of ten. Uh, what are we doing next week, Michael? Well, Luke, next week, as you already alluded to, we are doing Goodfellas. Um, yes, we are finally doing Goodfellas. It'll be the thirtieth anniversary uh, before this review of Cuties is released. So yeah, we'll have a lot to discuss on that. So uh, yes, we have been selecting and reflecting on Cuties because of all the controversy that we have uh, talked about. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I, we'll see if there's any more. Probably not. Probably that's the end of the Cuties discourse. There probably won't be any more after this uh, is released. It'll, it'll all stop. Yeah. As like like we said, it all all the focus is now on the Supreme Court seat uh, in in America. So uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Have you been, Michael? Uh, sorry, I just wanted to uh, more like Cuties. That's great. <laughs> uh, I've been, oh, I've, I've been Michael. <laughs>
I've been Lee. Thanks for listening and goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>